fruitiness. Sherry. Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. And today we have a second time a scallywag here on my cask. Well, it's the little dog, the scallywag, which brings the name to this whiskey. And these dogs, uh, those terriers, um, yes, the company, the family which owns the company, uh, Douglas Lang, they used to have those little terriers and from this uh, the name comes from. I tasted already the Scallywag with 46% uh, alcohol strength and uh, today we have 53.6 so quite a lot more and the price is up as well at a 60, 65, 70. The specialty of this Scallywag is that it is a blended malt. That means it is mixed together from the malt whiskies of several distilleries. And in particular, the, all those distilleries come from the Speyside region. So this whisky calls itself a Speyside blended malt scotch whisky. <clears throat> well, Douglas Lang is a company which produces a lot of blended whiskies as well as independent bottled whiskey and therefore they have access to a lot of distilleries in Speyside and in other parts of Scotland and from those casks from the Speyside distilleries they produce this Speyside blended malt scotch whiskey. They do not tell exactly from which distilleries the whiskey comes from uh, but I think on the back there's a list on the back isn't it? Uh, Speyside including yes among others, those distilled at Morlach, McKellen and Glenrothes. Well, that's what they say. And they say it's a cask strength, 53.6, as a cask strength is, well, a little less. So I would have expected more from a cask strength, but probably this whiskey is older. It carries no age statement. And uh, it's quite dark because it's a mixture of uh, ex-bourbon casks as well as ex-sherry casks. And the bourbon casks, I think they are uh, hogsheads, so it's refill bourbon casks uh, with a little more content uh, than a typical American standard bottle, uh, barrel. Sorry. Um, much of which can be attributed to years slumbering in cherry buds. The finish displays a burst of zesty orange with sweet tobacco, cocoa and rich fruit cake. Yeah. The chewy palate detect dark chocolate. Okay. Anticipate dark chocolate and cocoa with stewed fruits, rich spices and orange zest. So this is 53.6 and I'm not tasting more than 50, well 51 uh, neat. So I will add a few drops of water, just bring it down to slightly above 50. But in the beginning we take a sniff with the full cask things. Fruitiness, sherry, little spiciness coming up, vanilla I'm afraid, no, and these stewed fruits, yeah, and Christmas spices, this nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, yeah, and a little alcohol, yeah. <clears throat> so just a few drops, just to bring it down. 
That's enough. A lot smoother. More fruit. A lot less spice. So adding a little water changes a lot. Now the oranges are coming through. And, yeah, a little bit the smell of a tobacco tin. So no smokiness from burnt tobacco, but fresh tobacco in a tin. Now more oranges. Now there's more spiciness appearing. Yes, really. Going over, yeah. Too dark chocolate, cocoa, and this Christmas fruit cake, which is always left over. Nobody wants to. <laughs> but it's aromatic dark fruitiness, spiciness. Yeah. And it's a, a good mouthfeel full. The aftertaste is medium to long and I tasted the the 46% Scallywag. I think it has 46, hasn't it? Probably. Um, and that one has a too short aftertaste. This one is medium, not too long. So it would be good to have a longer aftertaste, but uh, I think this whiskey is not too old because the the fruitiness, the distillery character is still uh, present. It's very complex because it comes from a lot of different distilleries. Um, so this is more complex than a young single malt, definitely. Um, but the aftertaste, the spiciness, the oakiness from a long maturation period isn't there. So the aftertaste shows that it's not too old. Now the oranges are there, really, yeah. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. And if you want to discuss this whiskey with me, please do so on our vlog on whiskey.